This is Nelson George uh, for BlackAtlas.com. I'm at, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Le, Le Fumoir. Le Fumoir, which is a smoking place in, uh, in uh, central Paris, not far from the Louvre. I'm talking to Marles Marshall Lewis, who I've known for a long, long time. And um, he's uh, a black, a true black expatriate. He's living here. He's got a family here that he's, he's, um, he's raising. When I first moved here, it was 2004. And I felt like I was about to draw a line in the sand in terms of like, I'm 33, I don't have a car note, I don't have a mortgage, I don't, you know, right. I could really make a move right, right. now, and in a minute it's probably not going to be like that anymore. So, right, right. so I came, and uh, I'm glad I came, but my wife is French, she's originally from Martinique, right. but um, black French, and she moved here at four years old with her mom, okay. and has been living here, you know, ever since in Paris. So uh, we got married here. Our first son was born in 2005, and our second boy was born in 2007. And we're just we're raising them here. They have dual nationality. Ah, ah. The four-year-old is speaking more than the two-year-old. So right, right. he speaks to me completely in English, speaks okay. to his mom completely in French. Wow. And that works out a lot easier than I thought it would. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was nervous a, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's like feeding him Batman DVDs <laughs> in English. I'm the only English influence in his life. Right, right, right. But it, it, it's fine for him. He picked it up like a sponge. It's no problem. You're raising two young men. Mm -hmm. Uh, in France, saying black men is French. How is that, ex is that, it must be caused, like, how do I give them the history? Like, I haven't really crossed that bridge yet because they're so young. Right. Uh, <laughs> I did go through this issue of making sure that they had enough black toys and black right, books. Right. I made sure that they had, like, a black Green Lantern doll. Sure, sure, sure. Green Lantern's like a black hero. Instead of having all these, you know, white dolls right, and white right. books, right. because it's, it's harder to come across here. So for you as an African-American male here, I mean, how does it feel? I guess, what, what, yeah, what's, it, what's it like? <laughs> well, I went to Morehouse. After that, like, I've worked at Vibe, I've worked at BET, I've worked at Double XL. Like, I've surrounded myself by hip-hop culture and right, by sure. black folks. You know, right, like, right, Morehouse right. is a historically sure. black college. And uh, so I was somewhat... Um, of a race man, you know, sure, sure, living sure. in, in uh, New York. So living here, it's been a lot different. Like, I've, I've let a lot of that go. I mean, huh. at heart, I guess I'm still gonna, you know, be on that. Judging people, or not judging them, but receiving them just as people, as yeah. opposed to like white folks. Right, you know, right, right, you know, sure, sure, sure. The barriers that exist. So you find America, that some of those, some of those, some of that racial, okay, I'm, baggage, baggage <laughs> does disappear a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you connected to uh, an African American community here? Um, exp expats, or is that? Not really. You know, it's funny because a lot of expats, you know, they move here to move away from America, right. and so they don't want to like relocate and then hang around Americans. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They sort of want to seep into the society that they've, they've, you know, they've moved to. Uh, I mean, I know a few. Certainly, right, right, um, right. Tanny Stavall is another Morehouse grad who's okay. in his sixties. Every Friday, he does something for black men here, oh. um, just to hang out. You know, people bring tapes to the NBA games, stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, everybody brings a bottle of wine, and everybody gets toasted by the end of the night and stuff. He does it every Friday up until April, and then he goes to the south of France and hangs out for the summer and comes back. You know. So, uh, so you as a as a writer now, you you had a very active. You've done a several books in the right. states, um, and you write for a number of journals. Right. So how did, how has that been trying to keep your career going? It's been a lot easier than it was for Richard Wright and James sure, Baldwin. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, the world's so small now. You right, know, right. Like in terms of moving here in 2004, I knew that it would be like moving to Jersey because uh, I'd be as easily connected with all my editors and, right, right, right. and uh, I'd be able to get the same music just downloading it and stuff like that. So in terms of the music critiques that I write, sure, sure, the sure, Village sure. Voice and all these other places, like it's been just as easy as, as living in Harlem or living in Brooklyn. That's amazing. You know, which is, it makes things a lot easier, yeah. Are you doing also a lot of writing from a black perspective about France. Uh, right now I'm working on a book, uh, it will probably be called French Like Me, okay. like a tentative <laughs> title, uh, about moving here and about what life is like for people of color here. Um, the Africans, you know, who've migrated here, and uh, Les Antilles, you know, which is Guadeloupe and uh, mm. Martinique, and Haiti as well, a little bit. Uh, what life is like for them, because it's like, when the riots happened, it was on the cover of Time Magazine and right, Newsweek, right. and it was like this big thing of like, wow, France has black people, or <laughs> Paris has black people. It was like news, you know, mm. to, to folks that there were people of color here. Uh, and I remember my dad visited shortly thereafter, and I took him to Leal, which right. was like the Times Square type area. And he was just surprised at how multicultural it was. Right. And I was like, but it just didn't fit with his image. Like, right. It was his first time here, he'd never been, he didn't really know. 
but yeah, you know, it's not that different. Um, Can I say one, one closing question then? Mm -hmm. What what is a black American traveler? He's coming here. Right. What's your advice to them? What things that should should they do or prepare themselves for? Uh, well, definitely find a native. You know, right. <laughs> find somebody who knows the area that can tell you what's up. Uh, I have a site, furthermucker.com. Furthermucker.com. And uh, you can check that out because I, I blog on it regularly and, and talk about what's happening. Look up uh, Telerama. It, it's for television, but it's like uh, a Time Out New York type okay. of a magazine or a Time Out London or whatever that tells you from week to week what's going on here. And uh, get some good African food, you know. Uh, what, it, what, what spot do you, you have a spot? I do. <laughs> uh, Le Petit Dakar. Uh, which is like a Senegalese restaurant that's really good. Um, check that out. What else is good? Go to the 18th arrondissement. Uh, it used to be known around the World Wars as the Harlem of Montmartre, right. the Harlem of Paris. Well, those are excellent recommendations. Uh, I was just talked with uh, Miles Marshall Lewis, a very happy expatriate, uh, here in, uh, in Paris. It's amazing, and it's really been fun to talk to you. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot.